Hello, good morning to all. Welcome to your daily dose of Market Insight by Oenda. I'm Kelvin Wong here, the Senior Market Analyst of Oenda Asia Pacific. So very good morning to all. Today will be Tuesday, the 23rd of January, 2024. So before we start our daily dose of Market Insights, let's take a look at the disclaimer slides first. All right, leverage trading carries a high degree of risk and may not be suitable for everyone. Losses can exit deposits. This presentation is not an offer or solicitation to buy or sell, nor recommendation for any investment product, as well as any forecast prediction or projection in this presentation is not necessarily indicative of the future or likely performance of the product. This advertisement has not been reviewed by the Monetary Authority of Singapore. All right, so before we start our short-term technical outlook on the various cross-asset classes, let's have a recap of what happened last night uh, in the cross-asset uh, class performance. Uh, so last night over here that we do have a very uh, continue of this risk on behavior in the major US uh, stock indices where the Dow Jones, the, the uh, S&P 500, the NASDAQ 100 uh, added gains uh, slightly but not, not so much about 0.3% to 0.4% but to fresh all-time high. Uh, the Russell 2000 playing a catch-up with uh, addition of a uh, 2% yesterday. So yesterday, yeah, around 2% yesterday, again, uh, being the outperformer. So all in all, right, we could see this uh, risk on behavior still pretty much intact in the major benchmark US stock index yesterday. The dollar was uh, kind of sideways yesterday, uh, anticipating uh, BOJ, uh, uh, we call it um, uh, uh, announcement later on. So yesterday I touched about BOJ already. Uh, very likely there will be no change in terms of the short term negative interest rate, or rather stand pipe, and wait for more evidence, especially the uh, conclusion of this uh, ongoing uh, employees unions, uh, which negotiation with Japan Corporation that is still ongoing right now to be uh, concluded in March. Uh, so from there onwards, uh, BOJ were able to see uh, the results of this wage negotiation, will there be a substantial increase in wages before they actually act on to remove this uh, negative interest rate policy in April? All right, so uh, then thereafter, we have a uh, gold and WTI price uh, continue to trade sideways. So with that, uh, what are the key data to, to actually highlight to you all that took shape yesterday? Uh, the first key data I want to highlight is the US uh, Consumer Conference uh, index, leading indicator index. So if you look at this over here, this is the L LEI, the conference board, it actually combined by conference board, it's actually the, called the US leading indicator. So in the past, this US, uh, this leading indicator tend to actually forecast, uh, not 100%, I would say is tend to forecast the turning cyclical points of the US economic cycle. That means they tend to have a leading uh, element to, to, to actually be ahead of any recession, start of recession, and also to be ahead of any start of a economic recovery from a cyclical perspective. So yesterday's, right, the uh, LEE, the, they call it lead uh, in short over here, the numbers for December uh, came in negative a month on month at 0.1%, all right, but it was actually at a softer pace of 0.5% decline in November. So all in all, right, it's still hovering in the negative territory. Okay, this blue line over here, but right now it's showing a slight uptick, uh, but it's still below uh, zero over here. So uh, any any point in time, right, that is this deceleration, is deceleration, it will actually prelude previous recessionary period in the US as shaded in gray over here. All right, so this is what it means that over here is that there could be a chance uh, US may start to slip into a recession in the later part of 2024, as indicated by the Conference Board Leading Economic Indicator. All right, so uh, without further ado, I'll, I'll jump on to another uh, a, a, a policy, uh, important policy out from China. So you know that China's stock market yesterday was uh, another sign of what I call horrendous performance, where the Hansing uh, the index, the uh, CSI 300 and the CSI CEI, the uh, Hansing Chinese China Enterprise Index, uh, 
all of them fell about 2% to 1%, all right? But what's important over here is that the Hansen Index and the HSCEI all are actually now hovering to close to two decades low. So after this horrendous uh, decline in the China stock market, uh, the China policy stock maker as you policy maker as usual. So Premier Lin Chang came out to do a bit of verbal intervention and orders more measures to arrest this stock road. Uh, earlier this morning, uh, at the start of the Hong Kong session, which is China, uh, Asia session, I would say per se, they actually right now, there's actually a, a Bloomberg report uh, citing that potentially there could be a rescue package coming in at 278 uh, billion now, over here. Uh, that's equal to 2 trillion yen, uh, mainly from offshore account of China's state-owned enterprise uh, to form part of a stabilization fund to buy shares onshore through the Hong Kong Exchange Link. That means, i.e., uh, right now there is actually a measure uh, for the China top policy makers to directly intervene, indirectly intervene in the China stock market via this stabilization fund. So that actually causes uh, the Hansing Index to actually stabilize this morning, uh, a rally about close to about now, uh, if I look at it currently right now. So the Hansing Index uh, right now is actually up 1.84%, uh, but still below that 16,000, 16,000, uh, 16,000, 16,100 uh, resistance level. Okay. Okay. So these are the key, uh, uh, we call it, uh, events that took shape uh, yesterday before the start of our daily dose today. So now let's straight jump into the short-term technical outlook. Uh, or let us start with the FX market first. All right, so you look at the FX market over here, this is the rolling uh, five-day performance of the major FX pair as of today, right now. Let me change the date. Okay, 23rd of January. So we can see over here is, a uh, round of much more of a kind of a, a whipsaw movement. Uh, there's no clear dollar strength or weakness at this point in time, it's just traded sideways. But with the fact that the dollar uh, weakness is still underperformance, I would say dollar underperformance on a short term basis is still pretty much persistence against the sterling dollar, which has been hovering, uh, we call it at the lower mark. The lower, lower, the lower mark of my chart over here indicating to us that the dollar is still the underperformer against the sterling in the last uh, two weeks or so. So with that, right, let's take a look at the FX market uh, short-term technical uh, outlook. Uh. So in the short-term technical outlook over here, is if you still recall the euro dollar, we, we do have a bullish buyer since last Friday. Okay, so let me expand my chart. Uh. Okay, so still no change, right? The euro dollar still trade sideways yesterday after hitting the near-term resistance of 1.0905, which is the 50-day moving average. It didn't break and it came down. And today's Asia session it managed to stage a bounce uh, right very close to the 1.084 short-term pivotal uh, support level, which is so confluence with the 200-day moving average. So still no change, still using 1.084 short-term pivotal support to maintain that short-term bullish outlook. Uh, a clearance above 1.0905 potentially could see uh, the next intermediate resistance coming in at 1.0965, which is all confluence with the 20-day moving average uh, that is that that is much uh, in line, uh, confluencing with this uh, my short-term minor graphical resistance level that I draw over here, which is the former swing low area of 11 on Jan to 15 on Jan now turns into a pullback resistance at 1.0965. So net net all in all still maintain that short term bullish bias uh, watching the 1.084 short term uh, pivotal support level. Only an hourly close below 1.084 will uh, damage this short term bullish bias to kickstart another round of minor corrective uh, decline towards the next uh, support level at 1.08. Then a uh, uh, a, a breakdown below 1.08 takes us now much lower to 1.075. Then no change for the sterling dollar. So sterling dollar seems to me that it's still congesting within this uh, triangle range configuration, okay, that is in place since the high of uh, 28th of December last year, okay. So upper limit 1.2760, so still maintaining that neutrality stance, a sideway range configuration between 1.2760 and 1.2640. Now to the Aussie dollar. So the Aussie dollar over here is, uh, we, we, we do have a uh, maintain that bullish bias 
with a Titan key short term pivotal support at 65.70. So this level was tested during the US session last yesterday, but managed to stage a bounce uh, at the start of today's early Asia session. So no change still uh, 65.70 will be my short term pivotal support to watch. So right now is uh, uh, the Aussie dollar's attempt to actually fight back up above the 200 day moving average. Uh, and also what's interesting over here is that the RSI, if I draw the previous uh, over here, this is a descending, um, parallel descending resistance, descending resistance broke, tested over here and staged a bounce as well. Okay, so all in all, right, it seems to us that uh, upside momentum, at least in the short term, seems to be coming back into the Aussie dollar. So with that, uh, as long as uh, zero sixty, pardon me, sixty five seventy short term pivotal support holds, uh, we will still maintain that short term bullish bias in the first step with the first resistance to watch at sixty six forty, which confluence with the uh, fifty day moving average and as well as the minor descending trend line uh, that is in place since the high of the day of December. Only an hourly close above sixty six forty potentially could see much more of a pronounced recovery scenario towards 67.35 all right however a breakdown below 65.70 will negate this uh, short-term bullish outlook to see a, a slide back to retest uh, last thursday swing low area at 65.20 on the aussie dollar now dollar yen so dollar yen right now uh, i believe that the boj is not out yet let's see whether the boj announcement is out at this point in time let's take a look at the let me refresh Okay, it's out already. Yeah. So basically, uh, no change that we in market is is expecting over here. So uh, later I'll take a look at more on the uh, uh the guidance of the of what was BOJ uh, expecting. So let's see whether over here some of the news wire may start to come out already. Okay, on BOJ. Okay, no change as expected. Uh, so it's still looking forward to the more uh the policy statement. So I believe that the policy statement. Uh, it's not out yet, so no change. Uh, so uh, the one percent threshold on the upper limit, right, of the YCC curve. You know, still remember that BOJ has this uh one percent upper limit for the ten year JGB to fluctuate. So that one percent now is still remains as flexible, only as a reference. So uh, market now is waiting for the policy statement, and as well as the uh quarterly outlook report. Uh, let, at this point in time so but nevertheless right if you look at uh because i don't want to delay it further if you look at the current uh dollar yen right now uh yes it managed to pierce up uh, uh, above but it's still below that 14930 short-term pivotal resistance so as long as this level is not surplus right potentially we could see at least a a dip down to test 14730 which is the now the lower limit of this uh minor ascending channel that is in place since 28 of december low a breakdown below 14730 exposes the next support at 14625, which is the 50 day moving average as well. That is confusing as with the uh, former minor swing high of 11 of Jan. Okay, so then, then, all in all, right, uh, still maintaining that short term uh, bearish outlook on the dollar yen as long as 14930 short term pivotal resistance not surpassed. Uh, hourly close above these levels, uh, see a squeeze up towards the next resistance level zone at 150, 20, 150, 70. Okay, so that's pretty much sum up on the uh, FX market. So on the FX market over here, we see still see uh, at this moment, the dollar strength is still remains on resistance. So with the potential of the euro dollar uh, shaping a further bounce uh, in line with the Aussie dollar and together with a potential slight uh, uh, J uh, uh, Japanese yen strength coming back into the picture. Okay, major stock indices. Okay, so let us start the uh, let us start with the uh, Asia Pacific one first. So the Asia Pacific uh, Japan two two five, which is the Nikkei two two five. So right now, right, it really uh, surpassed the first resistance that we have yesterday and hit thirty seven thousand level, which is a psychological level. So right now over here, potentially we could see a bit of pullback down back towards uh, this level again okay the first support level over here previously a uh, first resistance previously now turns into a pullback support at 36 460 36660 so i don't want to use this level here as my short term pivotal support level because it's a bit uh, tight so i rather use uh, the next key one much more clearer where previously it was a range resistance from 16th of Jan all the way up to 19th of Jan before that bullish minor bullish break breakout uh, at, uh, at the start of this week. Okay, now turns into a pullback support level, which is all confluence with the lower 
limit of this minor ascending channel support from the low of 4th of Jet, that will be 36,150. So using 36,150 as my short-term pivotal support level in any uh, potential pullback, as long as this level is not surpassed to the downside, uh, potentially the uh, we will still maintain the short-term bullish outlook on the Japan 225 with the next resistance to watch at 37,480 level okay which confluence with a uh, FIBO extension level as well only an hourly close below 36,150 will uh, kind of uh, invalidate this uh, short-term impulsive bullish sequence to kickstart a minor corrective decline to retest the 17 gen swing low area at 35,350 Hansing index, the Hong Kong 33. So no change, right? The six, uh, the 15,000 will be still our short-term pivotal support level. Uh, price action uh, didn't manage to shape a push up, but didn't clear the previous last Friday minor swing high at 15,525. That was also rejected uh, on the US session. Uh, the US session on last Friday as well. So no change, uh, 15,000 short-term pivotal support. Uh, we need to clear above 15,525. Uh, before the next uh, near-term resistance to come in at 15,800 level. Okay, then thereafter we have the 16,000 slash 16,100. So all in all, right, uh, uh, yes, there could be a any chance of a rebound at this point in time, uh, but any rebound could just be a potential uh, minor corrective rebound uh, rather than the start of a major bottoming or major bullish reversal uh, configuration because there's still not enough elements to support this scenario. Uh -huh. Uh, however, uh, hourly close below 15,000 level should expose us uh, to see a deeper slide towards the next support level at 14,600. German 30. So German 30 uh, continued to actually trade higher yesterday in line with the US uh, benchmark stock indices and now managed to um, play around at a 20 day moving average. So uh, we do not want to use 16,640, 16, which is close to yesterday's swing low as my key short term pivotal support because it's too tight. Uh, still don't change the maintaining 16,515. So as long as any pullback managed to hold above 16,515, still maintaining that short term bullish outlook to see uh, the next resistance coming in at 16,790 above it exposes the key short-term resistance level or the range resistance level that is in place since uh, 14 of December high at 16,970. Only an hourly close below 16,515 will uh, negate this bullish tone to see a slide down to retest last Thursday swing low area at around 16,330 for the German 30. Then what we have next on the Dow Jones Industrial Average. So the US Wall Street 30 going to inch higher. Uh, so far, it managed to make a higher high, uh, no no bearish divergence on the hourly RSI. RSI also show higher high, but now it's actually trying to, it really has to really exit from the overbought level. So potentially uh, today, there could be a chance of a pullback towards 36,800. 37,800. So what's the 7,800? It's the former all-time high range top area now turns the pullback support. Uh, I don't know I use this level here as a short-term pivotal support, still using that close to that 20-day moving average, which is 37,550. So as long as 37,550 holds in any pullback, uh, we will still maintain that bullish outlook on the US Wall Street 30 uh, for the next resistance to come in at 38,400. Okay, uh, NASDAQ. Okay, so for NASDAQ over here, uh, price action managed to come down slightly after hitting 37, 17,000, pardon me, not 37, 17,500 level. Uh, or 470 slash 500 level before shipping that pullback. Uh, so I could see over here is that uh, there could be also another chance uh, because now it's really exit from the overbought level. Uh, right now it may start to uh, dip down slightly lower to the oversold region. Uh, that means IE that could be a, another slide down towards 17290. So with that right, I do not want to use 17290 as my short term pivotal uh, support. Still maintaining 17130 level. So as okay, so 17130. So if you do the FIBO retracement taking from the last swing high from last Wednesday all the way up to last today's intraday last not today's yesterday intraday US session you'll be at 38.2% FIBO retracement all right so as long as this level holds uh, 17,130 in any pullback we still maintain that bullish outlook uh, on the Nasdaq 100 with the next resistance coming in at 17,580 slash 17,660 
Okay, then thereafter followed by 17,750, which is the uh, 1.618 FIBO extension at the top of this range here. And if we do another uh, nested FIBO extension uh, from the low of 17th of Jan, project it up to the 19th of Jan last Friday and down to last Friday minus swing low, it come close to two times FIBO retracement as well. Okay. So net net over here still maintain the short term bullish outlook on the Nasdaq 100. Uh, only that if you have we will see an hourly close below 17,130, then we could start to see uh, a, a deeper minor corrective pullback. Uh, only a pullback uh, rather than the start of a uh, medium term uh, bearish reversal to retest the 20 day moving average and as well as the former minor range stop of 16,910 level, not acting as a pullback resistance. Okay. Uh, now, moving on will be the uh, bench, not the benchmark, uh, pardon me, the uh, precious metal, which is gold XAU slash USD. So let's look at spot gold. So spot gold going to trade sideways yesterday, no change, uh, playing around that 50-day moving average, still holding above that 2015 short-term pivotal support that we have yesterday. So uh, one thing positive is that the RSI has started to shape a higher low okay, at this point in time. So net net overall still maintaining that short term bullish bias with a slight chance of a uh, bullish momentum in the short term coming back into the picture for XAU slash USD go. So as long as 2015 level holds potentially we could see the next resistance near term resistance coming in at 2045 uh, that thereafter followed by 2060. Uh, this is the kind of range configuration that is being trapped since uh, the start of this year. Okay, so uh, it's more like a bullish bias being a range configuration. Uh, however, if we start to see a breakdown below 2015 level, then this uh, short term bullish bias will be uh, negated to see us another slide to retest last Thursday swing low at the 2000 psychological level. Okay, now uh, let me open up my chart for West Texas oil lastly over here so for west texas oil uh, we could still see it uh, churning within a range configuration okay so right now uh, what we could see something positive over here is the, in the short term scenario it starts to be much more clearer to break above the uh, 50 day moving average and the 20 day moving average over here and so right now coming very close to the 7605 uh, level and the 7495 level, this range over here. So given that it's now uh, very clearly above this two moving average, so I will actually tighten the key short term pivotal support for today on WTI oil, West Texas oil towards this uh, 20 day moving average and the uh, Monday, yesterday's minor swing low area or confluencing at 72. 60 okay 7260 7260 okay so we'll be using 7260 in any potential uh, pullback to maintain our short term bullish bias in west texas oil over here okay so this one will not be a pivot level anymore this one will be a next support level okay so as long as 7260 uh, short term pivotal support holds, uh, potentially uh, we could start to see a push up towards the swing high area of uh, 7605, the minor swing high area of 27th of January above 7605 potentially takes us up towards the 200 day moving average now acting as a resistance around the 78 psychological level as well. Right. However, a breakdown below 72.60 will uh, negate this bullish tone to see another round of choppy decline to retest the next support level at 71 figure level. All right. So now that's pretty much sum up the short term technical outlook for today. So before we go, let's take a look at the calendar. What are the key events to look out for for today? So uh, what do we have uh, later in the European session will be pretty much quiet. Uh, so tonight, the US session will be, uh, okay, pardon me, uh, in the US session, there will be nothing much except for the Eurozone uh, at 11 p.m., the Eurozone uh, consumer uh, confidence flash data that will be out later. Okay, then uh, over here, uh, I'm going to touch a bit about the US earnings season that is kickstarting, uh, is still on the miss. Uh, 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 right now the q4 earnings season so right now uh, there are a couple of uh, key component stocks right to watch out for that what do what I mean by key component, component stock that has what I call a significant weightage in the major benchmark US indices like the S&P 500, the Nasdaq, and even the Dow Jones. Huh? So later on Tuesday, that means Tuesday US session today, after the close, right, we do have Netflix uh, coming up. 
and as well as one of the uh, key uh, semiconductor, uh, uh, we call it uh, 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 US semiconductor uh, player, Texas Instrument will be out as well. So these are the two uh, key stocks that could actually uh, drive the major benchmark US indices like the S&P 500 and the NASDAQ 100. All right, so uh, with that, uh, that pretty much sum up for today's Daily Dose of Market Insight. So have a great day ahead and we shall speak again tomorrow. Thank you.